Hey guys, Brandon Lawson with the Art Burn Studio. I'm so glad you're joining me for another kids art lesson. Today we are drawing or painting or coloring however you would like to bring it to life, a zebra. Okay, so step one for me as an artist is once I see an idea, on the internet and sometimes these things that I'm creating I'm not using for money so I try not to copy it directly but I do try to use it as inspiration to create my own so I always go to my sketchbook that's the first place that I doodle and draw it and add the color so then I know what colors of paint colored pencils markers that I need to have out and ready for my supplies one material that I'm falling in love with that I always like are alcohol ink markers these are a great thing to have at home. These, I guess I got from Five and Below. So these were only $5 and there's a pack of 21. They are pretty good. Um, you can buy them off Amazon and buy them in much, much bigger um, amount. I think they can come up to like 180 colors. And as you can see, sometimes too many colors can be a problem. So you might wanna start off slow. But these are great tools to add to your art supplies because you can layer these colors and you really don't see the lines. They blend very well if you can see um, on my sketchbook. So go grab your art supplies. Let's get started on the Z. Let's talk about the supplies in my pencil pouch. Pencils, mechanical pencils, crayons, colored pencils, and markers are all great tools to use during our draw alongs. Okay, we're going to start drawing our zebra. Now, I have a 9 by 12. This is just white student drawing paper that I'm going to be using um, to draw our zebra. Now, pencil, you may use a pencil and then make sure that you're tracing over it with a permanent marker that after you do it. Now, the only thing we're not doing today with the pencil is adding the stripes or the lines on the zebra. We'll be doing that with another medium on the next step. So, if you choose to use a pencil, just make sure that you trace it with a permanent marker. We're not going to use a felt marker because if you're using a felt marker, which is just a Crayola marker, that is going to bleed um, when we put our paint on it. So make sure that we're not using that. Other supplies you could use, um, you could use a <clears throat> paint stick to draw, which are sometimes difficult because the tip can be kind of too fat. Not all kids like to draw with something that large. Um, a type of crown would work, oil pastel, anything like, like that that won't smear um, as we are drawing it. There is a guide. Make sure you grab the guide. I'm going to throw it up next to me so you can see. Let's go ahead and get our paper. Now, there's always a technique to help you find the middle. So if you take the paper vertically, take the top, fold those two short ends to meet up, crease it, and open it up that's going to help you find the middle which is about where we're going to start with our nose of the zebra so you can see i know you may not see but that fold is right there i'm going to get my drawing tool now the nose is going to be farther on the right of the paper and kind of right where that fold is i'm just going to draw a straight line now again it's there's room over here on the edge there's a lot of room on the left side now once we draw the straight line we're going to Add a half circle, coming off this left corner, we're going to do a diagonal line. Again, this diagonal line is the neck or the face part of our zebra. And again, it's not very long. We're going to the other corner. This is where we're going to curve up and around. This is the side of the face and we're going to move. Notice it's curving. And then we're going to put a one bump for one ear. Now, the middle between the two ears, again, it's kind of a diagonal because his head's turned and it's short. Another bump for another ear. We're not connecting these lines yet. That's not what we're doing. Now, this point of this ear, we're going to curve all the way down to the bottom. But be aware... You want to make sure there's room on the side for the mane of your zebra. So this line we're about to do, we do want to have room on the left side. So starting out the ear, I'm just going to curve. 
to the bottom of your paper. Make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. Now we're going to come over here under this diagonal line, kind of where those two meet, and then we're going to curve this line right underneath the nose all the way to the side of the paper. This is the zebra's other side of the body. Again, it goes right underneath the nose. It's not farther down here. It's much closer to the nose. Okay, for his mane, coming out between the ears, we're going to do a straight line past the ears. And then again, follow that curve, and we're going to meet it down here where this line is. So they should touch at the bottom right there. So that is your general horse zebra shape. So we're going to add a few details, which will be the nostrils, and we are going to color those in with our black marker. So if you're using a pencil, just make sure you go over that. Coming down the middle. So where this main starts right here, we're going to draw a line all the way down to hits the nose. And I'm just going to make it two times as thick. Either sides, we're going to add the eyes, a U with some eyelashes. Inside the ear, we're going to do the ear shape. So it's a straight line across. Don't touch the sides yet. And then a half circle. Straight line, half circle. Okay, so again, if you've done this with pencil, do not forget to outline it with your black marker before we move on to the next step. So that is step one, is drawing your zebra body. Again, we don't have the stripes. We're going to be adding that with a different medium. Make sure that your permanent marker is closed. Put that away and we're going to be moving on to step two. Step two, I have a piece of cardboard. This is what we're going to use to create those lines in the zebra. Um, you may have to hit two depending on the size of it. Like this is a good size for my paper. Now, i got to be careful as I move up the neck. I don't want to go all the way the longer side. I may have to use the shorter side, or you could always take your cardboard, cut it into two pieces, and that way it's going to be easier because I'm afraid I'll use the long side on one piece and then the short side on the other piece. I don't want the lines to go into the nose or anything like that. So... I suggest having two different pieces, again, using the long side on one piece and the short side on the other. I'm going to be using um, acrylic paint. You can use temper paint if you want because, again, the zebra is white, so we're not adding any color over the zebra. And you just need a little bit on your plate. Okay. So I'm going to start with the short side. You don't want to push too hard. If you push too hard, it bends your cardboard, and you don't want to do that. So you're going to carefully dip it in the paint. Now, our job here is to not paint the plate. We don't want to smear this all around the plate. We just want to dip it in the paint and then go straight to your paper. So his face does have some lines. I'm going to skip over the eye. And then it kind of starts changing the direction as you go. That's where you got to be careful. I don't want to go over the eye. And I'm just going to move down the neck. And I can go on either side of the neck, like on this side or that side. So I'm just going to move my way down. And then I can see once I start to get it where I need the longer piece, I can take this, put it on the plate, switch to my longer piece, find which one's going to work better. Again, dip it in the paint and work my way on the body. And you kind of want to do it sporadically in an imbalanced pattern. Some of them can be longer. Some of them can be fatter. But again, you notice I'm just touching it to the paper. I'm not moving it on the paper. I'm not using this to paint like a paintbrush. Okay, so I'm going to put those two down. Now, for the main of our um, zebra, we are going to use a different medium. The acrylic paint was just for the stripes. So these items can be tossed in the trash can. That can be thrown away. This is going to have to dry for the next step. Okay, 
Okay, once this layer has dried, we're gonna move on to our details, which are the inside of the ears, the nose, the hair, and the background. So you can choose to do this at different times or do it all together. I'm gonna be using Sargento Art and Blick Liquid Watercolors. I love them because they come in individual packages, which means you can limit um, the colors that are out. So that way, if this is a younger group, if you just wanted them to do the pink, um, which is the nose and the ears, you would just have that open. Um, I use the condiment cups to distribute it or to have it out. So that is what we're gonna get ready here. And then I have red, green as my background. Again, choose whatever color and then black. So I'm just gonna get that really ready real quick. And then we're gonna jump into the next part. And my favorite brushes are the um, Prang um, Royal, not Prang, I'm sorry, Royal Nickel, and they have different shapes and sizes. You can see some of mine are very well loved, um, but flat or round, depending. I believe I'm gonna use one of the round for the smaller parts, and then maybe do the larger one for the bigger parts. But so once you have your colors, again, feel free to open or close whichever ones you want. And I've diluted this red because I didn't want a red. I wanted a pink. And this is why we use a permanent marker because we can paint right over it and it won't mess it up. So the nose and the inside of the ears we're going to use with this color. And I also make sure there's water available and um, you got to be careful because we always want to start with the lighter color first because you don't want the kids to mix up the watercolors. So usually I would only open what I use and then close it, especially if you have a green and a brown, it's going to look very similar. So I would only open the next color. And my, the one trick I've noticed is when kids pick it up, they end up dripping everywhere. So you may want to tell them to give it a minute as they pick up their brush to let that drip and maybe shake it off right over the cup before they go straight into the paper because it will drip if they're not careful. And yes, it's a little bit of a gray. That's just because I diluted it some. Okay, so to make sure that all my hair is done, put my brush in the water, make sure I close up the black before opening my background color. Now you do want to give it a few minutes before you move to the next color because this is wet, wet next to a wet so if you want to stop here and then move on to put this on drying rack, move on to the next step the next time. That way, if you have little ones, it doesn't mess up the background. So that's up to you. Again, I'm using. So I've got my green. I'm going to start in this little area and just keep moving. Again, let them shake it in the cup before they move to the paper so it doesn't fling the color. Notice how I'm moving this paint around. You can see where it's puddled right here. So I'm just trying to spread it out instead of getting more because, and you can see it's just, it just keeps going. So I want to keep spreading it before I get more on my brush. So make sure I close up my background color. Make sure that I get my brushes and put them in the right place so they can get cleaned off. And then this little guy is gonna go back to the drying rack so this layer can dry. Just be careful. If you see the puddles right here, if you pick up your paper and hold it straight down, those lines may move and then it will bleed into the other areas of your paper. So try to keep your paper flat um, and not moving it around a lot. All right, guys, thank you for joining me for this kids art lesson. I hope you were able to create your own zebra using your own materials. And I can't wait for you to join me for another kids art lesson.